Hello and welcome to another quick run through of some uh, features and functions, especially uh, in this particular session, a walkthrough of some of the functionality that's provided as part of the ArcSight ESM real-time correlation platform. Um, this is uh, the first of uh, what I'm going to be doing as a series of uh, discussions, um, one way because it's on into YouTube and it's me talking about various features of uh, what aspects are to be considered and what aspects are relevant as part of a real-time correlation platform. Uh, that we need to understand and how uh, what actually is being provided and why it operates a particular way. In this particular case, I'm going to talk about timestamps. And timestamps are actually critical when it comes to understanding what events are happening and how that's happening uh, within the infrastructure so we can build out some monitoring. So I, I've got a very simple view here. I'm feeding through some, some very simple log data into the environment. I'm showing all logs as well. So what I'm not doing is I'm not filtering this, and I can see there's a whole mixture of uh, devices, and there's some internal events here as well. Uh, I just want to show everything with regards to what's going on. So we can see some correlations occurring and we can see some time. Now, this is an often uh, flagged up of, of uh, how do we know the time? How do we understand the time? And a common one that comes up is when I feed some data in, I don't see it in my active channel because timestamps become very, very critical. Now, let me give you an illustration. So in, in this example, we're just doing an active channel. We can see here uh, we're looking at some timestamps here. Now, the name end time is, is critical. If I look at an illustration of all times that are stored with the with the actual data look at the timestamp fields here we actually have five and this is critical to understand um, yeah we have the end time so the time that's generated at the log source if it's a uh, if it's a system that's actually can generate two timestamps so a really good example is a, a vulnerability scanner uh, or for example where a device is generating something where it, there is a start and an end so uh, for example a firewall might say that a port scan started at one time and ended at another time that's relevant to understand the impact and the context of what's going on so if it's a short or it's long or whatever so that's why we have two specific device uh, time so we have the start time and we have the end time here we also have what's known as the agent receipt time. So this is the time at which the data has been received into the infrastructure. So of course, that could vary. Now, in this example here, uh, this scenario, actually it is the same time because I'm feeding it through on my test system. But you would absolutely expect that the uh, actual end time of the, the, the event itself would be different to the time it was received into the system. Of course, if you're reading log files uh, and you're feeding that in bulk, that's typically at the time of the cut of the log file. So if it's an hourly or maybe even uh, two hourly cut on a log file, uh, that will come in at a certain block of time and then it would receive it at a certain time. That's excellent to understand if we're having a delay in our infrastructure and monitoring a according to that as well. It also becomes critical to identify when a log source has stopped sending data, which again we can do and it's built into the device monitoring aspect of, of the ArcSight ESM real-time correlation platform. So we can understand if data hasn't been received within a certain time frame. Next, we have the manager receipt time, so the time at which ESM has physically received it. Again, from this test scenario, you would expect it to be approximately the same time. Now, actually, you can see there's a very slight difference there because it takes a little bit of time for it to flow on my, my virtual machine environment. Um, and then finally, we have the device receipt time as well, uh, just as a, a, a secondary uh, timestamp with regards to this. So we've got an awful lot of data there, and we can see some information. And in a test scenario, it should be all the same because the data is coming in. But let me give an illustration here of where it might not be. So we can see here this particular uh, rule has been triggered here. Now we can see that this is a, uh, a statistical monitor that's been triggered. So it's a little blue lightning uh, symbol rather than a red one. Red one indicates the actual straightforward rule correlation. This indicates some sort of device uh, or, or statistical data monitor that's been triggered. We can see that the device time receipt from a particular device, that's actually my, my uh, spare laptop, uh, has actually generated. So if I actually just double click on this uh, particular event, we go to the actual uh, information here. We can see the data to here what's actually occurred is that the event time the device receipt time is less than the agent receipt time sorry is uh, device receipt is smaller than the, so the events received in the past that's okay 
the system will cope with that and it will correlate according to that. So that's not a problem. And that's actually becomes critical with regards to how this works. But what we can actually see is we're understanding this and we, we see and we compare this and we can identify when it's inaccurate. In fact, actually, for this particular machine, we can see there's a whole load of events. We actually, look at these events themselves and, oh, hang on a minute. That was yesterday. Oh, oh OK. So the, this now gives us the ability to identify data that's received incorrectly timestamp has changed uh, or anything like that. And in fact, actually, I, lo I look at my all my Microsoft logs. I can see that it's done it in bulk. So I can see that there's a whole bunch of data that's been done before. Uh, I can scroll down even further. And I can see date, and actual data goes back to the 19th. So it's a couple of days old. So it's pulled this data in dynamically, which is what I want it to do. But it's got the timestamp of the event at the time. So now it becomes a relevant discussion to say, well, yeah, I need to support this. It's not the event time of when it was necessarily received. It's not necessarily the event time when it was physically stored into the database. What I want to do is I want to understand the difference between these timestamps for management, from correlation, and also from a reporting stance as well. So it does become critical. So what actually is relevant here? Now, if I go back to my original uh, view here of my, my Times illustration, all these log messages here uh, that I'm receiving that are Windows events and so on, they don't appear here. Now, that's because they're from a different time. And that comes back to my, my uh, uh, active channel here. If I look at my active channel here with re relevance to the, what I'm viewing, I'm viewing the start and end time. So the start at which uh, this particular channel is displayed is now minus 30 day, uh, 30 minutes. So that's 30 minutes back and up to now. So it's 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 a continuously evaluating. So it's a 30 minute sliding window. But notice here, use as timestamp end time. So I'm only viewing the last 30 minutes of my log messages. I won't see all of those great Windows messages from two days ago because it's from two days ago on the end time, not on the device receipt time. So it becomes critical and relevant to understand that with regards to how and when that log data was generated. And again, final critical element is we need to be able to correlate at the time of the event itself, not the time that I received the event, because obviously the, the context of that event and that log data becomes critical to whether it was received in sequence for a particular attack or whether it's relevance on how we do this with regards to the rules that we've defined. So classic scenario uh, is physical access and log into a workstation. It has to happen in a certain order. We have to receive the data in a certain order and maybe we receive it in a different order. That's okay. But we have to understand that it was generated in a certain order. So if you log in and then badge into the office, that's a different scenario. So we need to understand that that's why we have multiple device, uh, multiple timestamps within the system. That's why we track that. And that's why you could potentially slip up and not see the events in a particular active channel. So that's a quick run through of some of the features and aspects with regards to timestamps. I hope you find it useful and I'll be adding more of a hints and tips and why we do things a certain way within the ArcSight ESM real-time correlation platform shortly. Thank you very much.